Hey, it's James, and I wanted to take some time to show and explain how I use this free item titled Counting Atoms for Interactive Notebooks. So I created this tool to help students learn how to count atoms in a chemical formula before I taught balancing equations, usually during um, the matter unit. So we would practice what naming elements and the, knowing the difference between an atom and element and a compound. And so I would usually sneak this in to help them and get a head start before the conservation of mass or matter unit. So this is my example and this is a student example. Now before I begin, um, you'll notice that there's white paper and then there's some green paper. So I'm sure one of the questions that I'll get asked is, do you need to use different colored paper for this? The answer is no. Um, I just use different colored paper to help keep me organized and then just to help me as I was passing papers out to realize that this was the organizer and um, these were the strips that I wanted the students to tape on the outside or glue on the outside. Additionally, um, they cut this out and then as I'm making copies, what I'll do is I'll use a paper cutter and I'll cut the strips really quickly, um, not nice and neat, but just cut them really quickly so they're smaller and then the students can quickly cut around if they want to make it fit nice and neat within each flap. So let me get started. So when you open this up, you'll see all this stuff in here. And I start at the top talking with how to read a chemical formula and what the letters mean and the numbers mean. So I have students draw a line from the symbol off the periodic table to the symbol in the chemical formula, which the students do here. As you can see this is a student example. Um, and then I have them highlight or box or circle the subscripts because that's what I begin to talk about next. Um, after I talk about that, I actually give them an example because right here at the bottom it tells them that they can't change subscripts. And I stress that by writing carbon monoxide on the board and carbon dioxide on the board. And I talk about, you know, can't change them. If you change a subscript, then you're changing um, the compound. And sometimes the compounds have different chemical and physical properties from one another. After they've done this part, we flip it over because then it's practice time. So they get a little bit of practice in. So I give them maybe two or three minutes. It's pretty quickly. Um, I also stress the importance of the one because oftentimes when I do this, there's always a couple students that if there's not a subscript, they will say zero. And I'm like, well, let's think about that. If there were zero, would that symbol be there? And so I usually throw a simple one like this on there so that they can answer and I can see if they understand. And they go through and they fill this out. When they think they got it, they call me over and I just quickly scan it and I give them a stamp that has my signature on it. Um, if it's, if 75% of it's correct, then I'll let them know, you know, okay, good job. Um, but this is something that I actually grade after when I go back into the interactive notebooks and I'll go and grade it to make sure. So I always tell them to double check their work. When they're done with that, I have them open it back up. Then we do the right side coefficient. So there's some fill in the blanks there. And then we get to this part where there is actual visual representation of the six molecules of C5H12. And I talk about, you know, if they wanted to, they can write this formula out six times. So writing that, and that's why I boxed it, writing out six times, but then also showing them just a visual representation so they can see that there are six of those. And if they wanted to, they can sit and count all the white and all the little black circles, or they can do it the easy way and they can multiply six times five, six times 12 to get the answer. When they finish with that, they flip it over. And there's some more practice here where they go through. Now, I actually put some polyatomic, oh, I put a polyatomic ion, uh, a compound that has a polyatomic ion in here because I want to see how they will respond to doing this type of question. So it's always fun to kind of hear what they're talking about and debate what they should do. Most often, um, my students will actually correctly guess what they need to do. So they'll say two times everything in the parentheses and then multiply times the coefficient. And then I also put one that has the element listed twice. So they need to make sure that they watch out for that as well. When they finish that, um, I'm, I'm done talking, then I'll say, okay, now I want to see, I want you to do it without any of my help. So let's see if you can do the practice problems here and then also the practice problems here. Now, the actual updated one does not have like the plus one and the minus one, the charges, because when I did this the first time, my students got confused with that. They started doing some weird things, so I took that out. So that is the Counting Atoms um, Interactive Graphic Organizer. As always, if anything about this item resonated with you, then like, share, or comment below. 
And if you haven't subscribed, then make sure to do that so that way you can continue to bond with James for additional ideas. Thanks for watching.